Well, 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 it's our old friend Screen Cancer again. Coming up, I'm going to show you some of my theories on what I think causes this, why it behaves like it does, and how to get rid of it. Because nobody likes it. So let's get started. Hi there. In part one, I took this nasty screen from this atomic purple Game Boy Pocket, but I carefully pushed out most of the dead liquid crystals that were on the screen, and I ended up with the LCD looking something like this. Oh, look how well this turned out. But after that, I still wasn't satisfied because I knew there had to be more I could do to improve the screen. So to do this, I needed to learn a little more about the science of how a Game Boy screen works and a little bit about twisted pneumatic liquid crystal displays. So here's a standard screen from a Game Boy Pocket. It's also the same screen that you'll find in a Game Boy Light, except as you see here, it has a translucent layer instead of a reflective layer in the back. In principle, this is the same way that the screen of a DMG works, except it has a more primitive framework that doesn't completely lend itself to what I did to the screen. So you'll see here, the ribbon cable at the top carries the image data from the CPU of the Game Boy, splits it between the horizontal chip here and the vertical chip here. As you see here, the screen is made up of these parts. The top glass layer, it has a polarizing film layer above, and below is an electrode layer that controls one axis of electrical signals. In the middle is your layer of pneumatic liquid crystal. This is typically between 5 to 10 microns in width. For a sense of scale, a human hair is on average 70 microns in width. Below is the bottom glass. On the top is another electrode layer that controls the opposite axis as the top layer does. Then below that is another layer of polarizing film that is 90 degrees orientation to the top polarizer. Then at the bottom is your reflective layer that reflects the light on the screen and allows the image to be seen. As you see here, the liquid crystal layer is filled with pneumatic crystalline particles that look like microscopic threads that are electrically conductive. When current flows through the top and or bottom electrode layer, it can control the orientation of the crystals suspended in the layer. So how do the individual pixels appear on the screen? That's a great question. When the CPU of the Game Boy sends picture data to the screen, it targets a specific X and Y coordinate on the screen. An electric charge then targets those coordinates, and the charge causes a small block of liquid crystal to change positions in such a way that they block a specific wavelength of light, thus blocking it out, making the pixel appear black. Now imagine this happening on multiple pixels, and now imagine this happening at almost 60 frames per second. Okay, so then what does this have to do with dead pixels? Here's my theory. Please note the following is a scientific theory and based solely on factual evidence and my opinion only. So basically, dead pixels are LCD liquid crystals that are no longer electrically conductive. Either by oxidization or some external force, they essentially become dead in the water. And for some reason, they orient themselves in a way so that they appear to be in the darkest pixel density. And the reason I think it's oxidization is because if you've ever seen anything oxidize or rust, it immediately attaches to its neighbor and it spreads in a similar way that you've seen dead pixels spread across the screen. As you can see here, you can't see the dead pixels on the screen right now, but as soon as you move the polarizer over the screen, you can see the dead pixels. I think once the liquid crystal particles become oxidized, uh, they're no longer conductive and they just assume this positioning where all you can see is the darkest color. So we're all familiar with seeing the dead pixels usually forming around the edge of the screen. Most likely over time, oxygen molecules slowly seep in and start to oxidize the liquid crystals that are trapped between the glass layers. And once they're oxidized, they're no longer conductive and they spread. 
And as for the dead pixels that you see starting in the middle of the screen, there has to be some catalyst that causes the oxidization to begin. Could be an oxygen molecule or static discharge or even something magnetic. It could be any of those things. Again, just to recap, my theory is that screen cancer or dead pixels is just LCD crystals that have become oxidized and they're no longer electrically conductive. So the premise behind getting rid of the screen cancer is simply breaking apart the clusters with pressure. This diffuses the concentrations of them and allows them to rotate on their own axes to block less light appearing clear. Okay, so the takeaways from this is applying pressure in different directions to try to spread the pixels out. Use something soft and sturdy like a Q-tip or a pen with felt on the end, or be creative. Adding a felt backing or something in the back to protect the back of the screen. And patience, this takes a long time. Three or four hours, maybe more. Just take your time and you'll definitely see some results. So good luck with your next broken screen. I hope some of the things that I've shown you are helpful and you can use the next time you have some screen cancer you need to get rid of. So remember to share this with your friends and enemies. Like and subscribe, it really helps me out, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot, and thanks for watching. Bye for now.